Now, Inside Broadway, the podcast about everything theater. From what happens behind the scenes to what to see on stage to the inside scoop from the stars and people who make it all happen. Here are your hosts, Michael Riedel and Christine Nagy. And that's one of the great songs from one of my favorite Broadway musicals celebrating its third year on Broadway. uh, Waitress, a terrific show based on that uh, really lovely movie by a woman I knew, Adrienne Shelley. It was written by Sarah Bareilles, who has joined the cast. She's in the show from uh, January 7th to February 3rd. And co-starring with her is an old pal of mine, Gavin Creel. Guys, welcome to our uh, podcast of Inside Broadway. Thank you. And I'm joined by Christine Nagy from Light FM. Hi, Michael Riedel. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Haven't seen you in a bit. All right, Gavin, (laughs) you were uh, in Hello, Dolly. I was. Bette Midler. I was. All right, who's the bigger diva? Sarah Bareilles or Bette Midler? Sarah Bareilles, 100%. She's so difficult. <laughs> I've been told. <laughs> Sarah, this is your first uh, Broadway show. Were you familiar with the movie when Fran and Barry Weisler, the producers, asked you to uh, write this show? No, I remember the poster, to be honest. Mm. Um, I, I'm i a big Carrie Russell fan, and mm-hmm. so I, I knew that she was in the movie, but I, I don't, for some reason, I just, I never actually watched it. And then... Mm-hmm. I had um, a wonderful lunch with Diane Paulus, our director, yep. Yep. and she was telling me about the about the idea and the sort of you know inklings of what this project was meant to become. And it was a very tentative yes at first because I wasn't familiar with the material, nor was I even remotely confident that I knew how to do this. Um, but I said yes as this kind of exploration, and it turned out. Okay. Had you been a Broadway fan before? Did you know a lot of... uh, Yeah, I grew up listening to almost exclusively cast recordings. (laughs) Interesting. um, Yeah, I did a lot of community theater growing up, and that was... I was sort of a a, a kid who couldn't really find my place. Not that I didn't... I had some sweet friends growing up, but I always felt like an outsider until I found the theater community, and Mm -hmm. I just... The band of misfits. It's just, it's it's where everybody has a place, don't you think? We are the land of misfit toys. Yeah, <laughs> you really are. It really is, and yeah. it's so beautiful. I'm proud to be, I'm no, proud to be one of them. Not when you're yeah. in a hit show. When you're in a flop show, <laughs> yeah. then you're really misfit toys. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it, even, even a hit. Like, it feels like that on the inside, right? It's this, it's this weird thing mm-hmm. also, I don't know if you've experienced this, but like, y- you have a community of people who accept kind of everybody, mm-hmm. and then you go outside of it sometimes, you're like... Isn't the world wonderful? And the world's like, no, shut up, Broadway guy. <laughs> you know, yeah. And and you come back here, and people are like, no, it is wonderful, and and we're singing about it eight Mr. times Chip. a week. Yeah. So Sarah, having uh, done theater, did you have an intuitive sense of uh, how to write a song for the musical? Because it's different, I would think, from writing a standalone popular song. Yeah, I think I, I must have had some sort of deeper intuition about it because. I, I, what I found is that it was really fun, like mm. immediately. I really, I loved the challenge of finding my way into the psychology of each character. Um, I'm not so great at exposition in terms of like, let's move the plot from A to B. I'm, I'm better at kind of mining and excavating the, the internal architecture. The emotional life yeah, of a character. That's yeah. what I love, or that's what has kind of manifested in this show is that each song is sort of just pulling back the curtain on each character mm-hmm. in in certain ways and um and I and I really loved that I found that I I I had instincts about where songs should be but this is where it was really you know collaboration is is everything in theater and so having a wonderful team of of people to sort of bounce ideas i i did some swing and misses guys i, I definitely <laughs> well everybody's got I, truck songs the songs that were cut <laughs> yeah. from the first draft yeah the one where we had dancing semen behind what? earl what? the Excuse abusive me? husband yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah that was uh, <laughs> oh, the song like... was called please have sex with me <laughs> and there's uh, there's a reason it's not in the show anymore oh well <laughs> oh, someday this... <laughs> blooper reel if this it is existed good. this has got to be a for, forbidden broadway sometimes so. uh, oh yeah. yeah that's true it's a forbidden something I don't know. I feel like you're the perfect fit. Uh, you know, I've gushed to you before, Sarah. I just think you're one of the most talented, beautiful singer-songwriters. Thank there's you Song so gravity. Much. You know, Thank there's you. there's music that you write that is just heart and soul, and so many of us relate to. And I think that's what's working so well with Waitress is that these are beautiful, really personal, touching characters. And 
and you're in them. You embody them through your music. And then step in as a as a performer as well. Oh, thank you. I think, you know, we got given such incredible bones from Adrienne Shelley's beautiful script and this world she created, which is so, you know, sadly she's not with us to, to see the show. Um, but we really tried to sort of invoke her spirit and um, make her proud with this project. We were very um, vigilant about mm-hmm. wanting to protect the the eccentric, kind of strange, quirky world of waitress because what I love about these characters is that nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. There is no hero, villain. There are messy people doing the best they can, making mistakes and trying to make the best of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a wonderful show, but overhanging it is the tragedy of Adrienne Shelley. Now, I knew her back in New York, <laughs> Gavin, when she was a struggling actress. She dated really? a friend of mine I went to college with, Dan Futterman, who went on to write Capote. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were dating at the time. We used to hang out a little bit. And then as her career took off and she became a successful writer, she was sadly uh, murdered yeah. in her office in the West Village where I live. So I couldn't help but think of her when I was watching the show. And it does add a, a layer of melancholy to it to some yeah. extent. Well, what's, what's, what's neat, and Sarah's mentioned this before, there's also, I don't believe in coincidence, and this is a little woo-woo, but I believe in this, in that there's this angel sort of looking over the whole show. And Sarah's mentioned at times, she's like, you know, with my own um, career and an experience in this world, and look how beautifully, I mean, it's it's such good material, I think, and it's such good storytelling. But there's this angel kind of watching over the project and carrying it on to a national tour and to the London production that's opening in a month and a half. And yeah. it's become this important, I think, emotional journey and it started with the idea, everything starts with an idea, and it started with the idea of this woman that I now sort of have met, and I never knew her, and I never mm-hmm. met her. Yeah. And, it, and because of Waitress and what Sarah and Jesse Nelson and Diane and, and the entire team have put together, everybody gets to sort of meet her. Well, yes. you've done what all successful writers of musicals based on other material do, which is that you've made the show your own, but you've preserved the essence That's of Adrian's vision. Yeah. Now, Thank when you, you wrote this, did you ever think, oh, I'm writing this for myself. I'm going to star in it? No. No. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> no. I mean, I think by accident, I wrote, I just, I the only way I knew to write was to write songs that felt good to sing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then I got schooled by my male, you know, actors going like, hey, guys, voices don't go that high. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so as everything's up in the rafters. Um, so I did, I learned some, some lessons that way too. But um, uh, yeah, I think I... It was such a huge undertaking. It was more, I have worked more hours on this than anything in my entire life. I had no idea what I was saying yes to. And if I knew how much work it was, I know I would have said no. (laughs) And I'm so glad that I didn't. I mean, it's changed my life in every possible way. It is the greatest gift, the hugest blessing. I can't, my life falls into two categories. It's before waitress and after Mm -hmm. waitress. And I'm so happy to be living after waitress. Um, or inside of waitress, um, <laughs> but yeah. How about star inside of a waitress? How about starring in a waitress? It's pretty unbelievable. I mean, this is my third time doing the show. Clearly, I love it. I mm-hmm. love coming back. Um, I I have a new record coming out this year, so this was my little pocket of time to touch down with the show to celebrate our third year on Broadway, our three productions, my third time in the show. Third time's a charm. Sounds like <laughs> and, it, yeah. Um, yeah, bringing, you know, this incredible co-star and wonderful friend along. Um, we're so grateful he said yes. It's the best phone call you can get when somebody you love and, and respect. Oh, she says, called you to come in? Yeah. Oh. She said, we've been talking about this idea, and do you think you might want to do it? And I was like, at first, fear took over. I was like, no, you don't want to do that. Because it's so, g- I was intimidated. Well, you've and got then, the hair for the part. You've got the guy's hair. It's do I? Hair. <laughs> yes, it's great. It's great Broadway leading man hair. Gap, Thank I must you. Say. Thank you. It's a wig. Thank you. <laughs> you can have it too. <laughs> I bought this glued on. Gavin, yeah, a question for you. You've been in a variety of Broadway shows, La Cajo Full, Jerry Herman, of course, uh, Hair, Galt McDermott, uh, Book of Mormon, Bobby Lopez. What? What impresses you most about the kind of songwriting that Sarah Bareilles has brought to the musical theater? I'm, uh, I'm, Please compliment me. <laughs> no, I mean, it'll be a compliment because I love it. But, but more for me is I grew up listening to Top 40 Radio yeah. and was obsessed. I would go to church and I would hopefully we'd go to first service because the, t- the number one song would be announced. 
And yeah. if we went to second service, I would miss it. And I would I would race out and grab a broom and do my chores and stand on the front porch and like sweep the front porch really slowly because I could see if Banana Rama won, <laughs> you know, number one or whatever. I love pop yes. radio. So I grew up, I didn't really come to musicals in the way that a lot of people in the business have. And to be able to find somebody who understands and know, knows and does pop music and that it, it's, it's her lifeblood, but then can cross over and understand character and and take those moments like she said and and let's let's look at the, let's pull the curtain back and look in and the tunes are great and the lyrics are great and she's able to embody the, all that i just I, I dig it it's, it's my, my favorite thing yeah it's an absolutely beautiful score i have yeah. to ask you uh you've had a good time doing it uh, will we see more musicals from uh, sarah Bareilles? i sure hope so i mean this was such a um a beautiful accidental discovery that this was I think, to be honest, when I started, I I wasn't sure how I would feel about writing songs that I didn't get to sing. You know, mm-hmm. that I was... It was that you had, sort to, of, had to give to somebody else. Yeah, sending it off. And I have to say, one of my proudest moments in my entire artistic career was our first show with an audience in Boston at the ART, where this show was first mounted, um, sitting in the back of the theater at the, our first preview and watching the cast take the curtain call. I mean, it was just... Mm-hmm. It was... I was f- so filled up... And I didn't have to have my complicated relationship with the spotlight. You know, I'm a ham. I like attention. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> at the same time, it was really beautiful to just be one of the creators and mm. watch and watch something take life that I didn't have to be a part of. I and, was uh, at NBC for the live broadcast of Jesus Christ Superstar. And you were absolutely sensational oh, as you. Mary Magdalene. Thank it was terrific. You. Uh, you got to hang out with Andrew Lloyd Webber. So uh, what do you two songwriters talk about? Did you get any tips from Andrew about writing for uh, for musicals? You know what I loved about working with him? I mean, so many things. He's one of my all-time favorite composers. Um, he was so lovely. I got a Christmas card from him. So this did I. Year. Oh, my God. I couldn't Andrew and Madeline. It. Gavin, I did you? Yeah. No. No, me either. So, <laughs> so sad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, Tim Rice wrote me one. No, he didn't. <laughs> um, but I love that Andrew, Andrew is constantly creating. He's constantly... He was... For a period of time, they were maybe going to write a new song for this broadcast. Right. And then so we were working on a, a piece of new material and it was incredible. And But it was just, it was so clearly he was just like, he's a creator. He's And he's constantly um, interested in giving you, um, you know, feedback and encouragement. I found him to be really warm and encouraging in the room. I was very nervous <laughs> singing I don't know how to love him in front of Andrew Lindbergh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. And I, could, they, I couldn't even hit the first pitch. I was like, my voice was really shaky. And um, he was so lovely. And you know, on that live broadcast, he was actually in the sound booth. Oh, mixing, I know. Mixing the show. Him, me, Andrew Lloyd Webber wow. was at the soundboard mixing the show yes. himself. Wow. wow. He wanted more drums. Oh, he's more good. Yeah. He is good. Uh, Sarah, you probably noticed your social media following, your fans. And Gavin, I see you've got a great following as well. There's, oh. there, they're so kind. They're I so know. wonderful. So supportive. I love seeing that. Me too. Well, I think they know, and I know this is one of the sort of cornerstones of Gavin's philosophy, life philosophy as well, is that I don't, I'm not interested in like catty mm-hmm. BS. You know, mm-hmm. like I just, there's no place for it. I don't need you defending me with a bad attitude. I don't need, you know, I really believe that kindness is the road I want to walk and I don't have time for the other, and I, and I don't want I don't want people sort of engaging in that way. And right. I think social media it's really easy to find yourself slipping into that tone of interaction mm-hmm. where we forget that we're just people on the other side of the screens, and how easy it is to be unkind and how hurtful words can mm-hmm. be. Which is not to say that I don't get a holes on my. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself for not swearing. Yeah, right thank now. you. <laughs> well Truly. done. Yeah. Nice of yeah, you. Yeah, and thank you. Gavin, I know your philosophy is kindness as well. So yeah. I think you put it out there and it just comes back to you. You know, I, I, I've, I'm sort of like, ugh, social media freaks me out. And I, it took me forever to join Instagram. But I'm sort of seeing Instagram as the stage door. I'm trying to pretend it's the stage door. And when I'm not in a show, I don't have a place to say thank you or say hi to people. I don't post a lot. I don't follow anybody because if I want to find out what someone's doing, I have to call them. And so, mm-hmm. but um, I, I, it is kind of a wonderful thing to be able to come out. I, I've only done two shows at Waitress so far. We, we have a beautiful month ahead. But two stage doors packed, obviously, because they're obsessed with Sarah and they want to see. But all of these young people, mostly young people, but all ages, are so patient and kind. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's, it's a kind of a beautiful thing. And I think that's trickle down. It's like... If you lead as, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are different stage doors and, and different concerts and different shows. 
where the star that you're seeing is is acerbic or 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 hard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know a few. Yeah, and and it'll ch- and and I think the fans will then follow suit. So oh, it when could you change everything about yeah. what you once admired about that person. Yeah. Yeah, and so if you've got somebody like Sarah who's writing it and and starring in it and and then coming out and interacting in the mm-hmm. same way, mm-hmm. it's just a good lesson for all of us. Yeah. Well, you yeah. can't leave waitress and be mean to people. No. I mean, could you imagine? <laughs> it's not going to happen. Leave stage and then you're just a total jackass. Oh. Pies. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Waitress, in its third year on Broadway, mm-hmm. before we let you guys go, we like to ask our guests their favorite four or five uh, songs from the musical theater that uh, mean something to to you in a, in, a, in a kind of a deep, profound way. Gavin, we'll start with you. There's a song from, this is a really obscure one. I apologize, Michael. And then it's Christine, but if I, I don't know it, I am not worth my uh, show queen credentials. Well, it's from <laughs> A Wonderful Life, Joe Raposo and Sheldon Harnick. Oh, yes. And it's called I Couldn't Be With Anyone But You. I it's think it's my song. favorite musical theater lyric. It's a beautiful song. Yeah, yeah, stunning. And I talked to Sheldon when we did She Loves Me. I talked to him about it. And he was like, I wrote that about my wife. And she was sitting right there. Oh, and that I was is just so like, sweet. it's That's so beautiful. A yeah. couple yeah. of others? Um, I, f- I, I think I have to say, uh, the the flesh failures and let sunshine in. Not because I was in it, but because it is to me the and the way that Diane staged it in our revival. Just the, it's the perfect ending to a show. Oh my god! And that then song. Yeah, wow. and then somebody somewhere from the Most Happy Fellow, which is my favorite musical. Oh, I love that. That's I, beautiful. I love that. I love that lyric. I love the pain and the struggle, and I just think it's so beautiful. Frank Lesser. I music. love that Joey, Joey, oh, Joey. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. And you, Sarah? Ooh, let's see. Um, so. Someone else's story from chess Beautiful was song. one of the ones that I would sing into my mirror growing up, and uh, and I actually remember really paying attention that lyric in particular at the end. Her saying, "The trouble is the girl is me." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The twist and the mm-hmm. turn on the I was like, "Oh my god, this mm-hmm. is revolutionary!" <laughs> but that is a great tip for songwriting in the musical theater to give it that little flip at the a end. Little flip at the end. It's just really, it's really um, smart storytelling. Um, so that's one of my favorites. I think I have, and maybe it's because it's so fresh for me, but I don't know how to love him from Jesus Christ Superstar. I mean, Mm -hmm. I just really, the song is so, it does all the things that it's supposed to do and it's emotional and it's simple and it tells this beautiful, um, journey of this woman and then kind of getting into the, the backstory of Mary Magdalene was really interesting as well. Um, anyway, so I love that one. Let's see, what's another one? There's um, so many. Oh. So I did Little Shop of Horrors growing up oh, yeah. um, ah. two different times. <laughs> and um, Somewhere That's Green is, is one of my favorite songs to sing. It's And Alan Menken is... And Howard Ashman's lyric. Terrific. I mean, rid- ridiculous. So, yeah. That's a hard song. because It it's is a, a it's very a list. hard song. It's a list. Right. It's so, uh, and, 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 and the actress has to, impl- to, to um, you know, imply and bring the emotion to it. And it's... Or to just let the audience And it's it funny, but it's also kind of heartbreaking. Yes. And yeah. I mean, it's really, it's well, a Well, classical a musical theater song, you know, she's imagining somewhere where she wants to be, where she isn't. But yeah. the things that she's yeah. imagining are so, like, tragic. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> she's like, I just want this tiny little house that looks like Plastic. everybody's little house. Uh, yeah. I want, like, a, you know, tiny little television. And yeah. All right. And one more for you, Gavin? You got to... Um, you know, I, I, think I, I think I have to say... Sit down, you're rocking the boat because that's yeah. just in my head. I mean, that's just a rollicking good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Always fun. All right, yeah. waitress, a sensational show now in its third year on Broadway, written by Sarah Bareilles, now starring Sarah Bareilles, oh, yeah, along with the great Gavin Creel. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us here on Inside Broadway. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. And you can follow us if you're listening on the iHeartRadio app or on your computer. Just hit follow so you always know when we put up a new episode, which is every Friday. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Christine. (laughs) We'll talk to you next time on Inside Broadway.